Yeah, I don't think Mother knew about this. Uncle Marvin was strangled by his own beard. Yeah, he never saw it coming. And welcome to Extreme Genes. It's America's Family History Show and ExtremeGenes.com. Fisher here, your radio root sleuth. On the program where we shake your family tree and watch the nuts fall out. This segment of our show is brought to you by LegacyTree.com. Nice to have you along. we got some great guests today. we got the CEO, the president, the Grand Imperial Poobah of the New England Historic Genealogical Society. It's Brenton Simons. He's going to talk about a, a special thing coming up that may relate to some of your ancestors. Ancestors. It's called Project 2020. It's going to involve potentially travel to where your ancestors were from in the 1600s in England, in Holland. What's going on with that? What's that about? You're going to find out in about eight minutes or so. And then later in the show, I'm going to talk to Deanna Novak. She's with kidsheritage.com, and she talks about how it is that you can get your kids involved in family history. And it is so much fun once they start getting hooked and asking questions and wanting those stories. She'll have some great tips for you there. And then later on in the show, Tom Perry talking about the anti-cell phone camera. What's that about with our preservation authority, Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com. But right now, wherever you are this week, David Allen Lambert is here with us. He is the chief genealogist of the New England Historic Genealogical Society and AmericanAncestors.org. You've been on the road for like the last three months, I think, David. Yeah, I'm going to have to have these wings removed eventually and settle down <laughs> and actually see my own family. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, I'm on the road right now. I'm actually at the National Genealogical Society's conference in Raleigh, North Carolina and meeting a lot of our listeners. So it's been lots of fun. And, you know, you always hear about new organizations to join. I've got one for you, listeners, and this actually ties into our President Brenton Simon's talk with you later. There is now the Society of Miles Standish Descendants. Uh -huh. just started. Yes, Miles Standish, and, of course. He was the military guy among the pilgrims. Well, he wasn't a pilgrim himself, but he was their military man. He was the guy with the big head, as I recall reading, right? I think I've heard that uh, mentioned before. Uh, in recent years, actually, they have found a portrait, which they believe is him. So now they at least have a couple images of real pilgrims, uh, other than the fanciful ones that our artists have made up over the past couple sure. hundred years. Right. And, you know, there is a John Howland Society. For instance, if you join the Mayflower Descendant Society, there's uh, one for him. And I'm sure there are many others as well. John Alden Society, right? Oh, I believe the Alden Kindred has been around for probably almost as long as most of the Alden family has been been here. That's one sure. of the more active ones. Yep. Well, one of the exciting things that I learned at the NGS conference, a new announcement from MyHeritage.com, one of our sponsors, and they have put out now records for the Netherlands that go back to the 16th century. That's fantastic. And you know, there's so many that are coming out right now. I've been researching my wife's Dutch line. She's one quarter Dutch. And I recently found this document where her ancestor changed his name. If you're not familiar with the history, when Napoleon was conquering Europe, he found that too many people had the same name because it was patronymic, meaning they were named after the father's name. So it was really fun. His signature at the bottom. And this is going to be a great resource through MyHeritage.com. It really is. In fact, civil registration is very early. It goes back to 1811. But again, the church and population schedules are included as well. And some of the church records go back to the 1560s. So this is tremendous wow. and will definitely help out genealogists. Another exciting news is with FindMyPast.com, where they've announced six counties in six months. So they're going to be put on early church records from the 1500s on. That includes Warwickshire, Wiltshire, Berkshire, Buckinghamshire, Somersetshire and Nottinghamshire, England. That's a lot of shares. It sure is. <laughs> <laughs> it's Shire, David. It's Shire. That Bostonian ah. thing. It just gets in the way all the time. Sorry about that. Well, recently in the news, the director of the Census Bureau, John Thompson, has resigned. And this is in light of a recent controversy that the 2020 census is underfunded. We've talked before about how for the 2020 census, they want to make it more automated. So you go online, right. fill in your information and submit it that way. Well, this new system originally was going to cost X amount of millions is now up to $965 million. So it's going to cost more than they thought. So it's now 
totally underfunded. My question is, does this mean we are not going to get a 2020 census or we're going to do it the old paper folded method that we've been doing for years and knock on door enumerators, which has worked since 1790? That's true. Absolutely. It'll be interesting to see how they work this out. Well, they've got a couple more years to iron out the details and hopefully they'll get this worked out. Your children's identity has always been a concern. Now, when people have lost children, they die in infancy and whatnot, you don't think that you're going to do genealogy and find out that someone has stolen their identity. Well, this is actually the case that happened for a family from Pennsylvania. Back in 1972, an infant by the name of Nathan Wiskowski died. And another person assumed his identity for years. And you may have heard the story. He escaped from a correctional institution. Yeah. And he went right to a cemetery to find somebody who had died who was born around the time that he was. And then went out and got that guy's birth certificate, a two-month-old, and then used that identity mm-hmm. for 21 years without getting caught. Something's wrong with our system. You know, I'll tell you, I love to talk about our bloggers out there. And on our blogger spotlight this week, someone who's very well known in the genealogy world, Leyland Metzler. And Leyland has a blog aptly called genealogyblog.com. Boy, that's a good one to get, isn't it? (laughs) Kind of catchy. Yep. Leyland put a blog out on May 9th, which is an interesting thing because we all love newspapers. I know you and I both have very good success using the newspapers. And now the Library of Congress, he announces on his May 9th blog, has put out the World War II internment camp papers for the Japanese-Americans internments. Well, at NEHGS, we like to toss out the idea, if you're not a member, why not consider membership at AmericanAncestors.org? By using the checkout code EXTREME, you will save $20. And we hope that some of our listeners will also become a free guest member of NEHGS. Just go to AmericanAncestors.org and find out more. Well, next week I'll be back in Beantown, at least for a couple of weeks before I head out to Seattle, Washington. So I get to rest my wings a bit. <laughs> Always a pleasure to talk to you, my friend. And right, uh, I'll go back and talk to some more of our listeners. All right. Very good. Have a great time at NGS, and we'll talk to you next week. And coming up next, he's the president and CEO of the New England Historic Genealogical Society. And he's got an amazing project coming up that you're going to want to hear about. That's in three minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Did you know that Family Search Family Tree is available through a powerful new mobile app experience? That's right. Now you can view, edit, and even add information to ancestors in your family tree whenever and wherever you are. You no longer need to wait to get home or make a date with your computer to view or update your family tree. You can add details to your tree when visiting with family or when capturing details from a trip to the cemetery. You can share new family history discoveries from classroom settings. You can even make the most of your time when waiting for doctor appointments or car repairs. Get started today by downloading the free Family Search Family Tree app to your Apple or Android device. Visit familysearch.org slash tree app to get the Family Tree app for free. Exploring and expanding your family tree has never been more convenient. Visit familysearch.org slash tree app to download the Family Search Family Tree mobile app today. Legacy Tree Genealogists is a proud sponsor of Extreme Genes. Based in Salt Lake City, Utah, near the world's largest family history library, we've been working with genealogists all over the globe since 2004 to track down records, find your ancestors, and the stories that bring your legacy to life. We also analyze DNA test results, help you join lineage societies, and find missing cousins or heirs to property. Legacy Tree is the recommended research partner of MyHeritage.com and is the world's highest client-rated genealogy firm. Call us toll-free at 1-800-818-1476. Call now or register online to get a free estimate. Learn from our free genealogy tips on our blog at LegacyTree.com slash blog. Even experienced researchers can benefit from our proven and experienced staff of specialists who can bring new approaches to old problems. Legacy Tree Genealogists. We do the research. You enjoy the discoveries. LegacyTree.com.
Extreme Genes is sponsored in part by 23andMe.com, a personalized genetic service that helps you understand what your 23 pairs of chromosomes, your DNA, say about you. 23andMe.com gives you a snapshot view of your DNA with more than 60 detailed reports on your health, traits, and ancestry, plus tools to explore and compare your DNA with family and friends. 23andMe.com is the first and only genetic service available directly to you that includes reports that meet FDA standards. Here's how it works. Order your DNA kit from 23andMe.com. Provide your saliva sample from home and mail it back to a CLIA certified lab. Then you'll be notified when your reports are ready online. You'll also receive ongoing reports as new genetic discoveries are made and as 23andMe.com is able to clear new reports through the FDA. See why more than 1 million people are experiencing their genetics with 23andMe.com. Order your DNA kit today at 23andMe.com. And welcome back to America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here, your radio root sleuth, and this segment is brought to you by FamilySearch.org. And I'm excited to have the president and CEO of the New England Historic Genealogical Society and AmericanAncestors.org, Brenton Simons, on the line with me right now. Brenton, it's the first time. Great to have you on the show. Well, I've really been looking forward to it. Thank you for having me. You know, I'm looking at what we're going to talk about here, and it's of such national importance, actually international importance, and will affect anybody with uh, ancestry from New England way, way back. But that can mean descendants in the South and descendants in the West and who have actually left the country over the years. Let's talk about the 2020 celebration that's coming up and what your role is in it. Well, we're really excited about this. 2020 will be the 400th anniversary of the landing of the Mayflower. And as you say, that is a really national or international story. And we are working together. We're partnering with a number of other organizations, including Plymouth 400, the General Society of Mayflower Descendants, Plymouth Plantation, several organizations in the United Kingdom, and are planning a huge number of events, publications, tours. Uh, There will be an important ceremony in Plymouth where we expect hopefully the President of the United States and a senior member of the royal family from England. But more particularly for genealogists, this is important because we are going to publish a number of books. Robert Charles Anderson, our great migration author, is going to publish four books. And that will be a great resource to family historians everywhere. So so there is a lot underway. I, I'm thinking of Robert Charles Anderson. It's like the man never sleeps. He doesn't eat. He certainly doesn't go to the movies. This well, <laughs> you, you've got it. You're exactly right. And I met with him about a week ago and said, Bob, you're going to have to put off retirement several more years. So, <laughs> And he's happy to do that because he understands the importance of this milestone. Well, it is. And there are so many of us who are Mayfly our descendants. I'm a John Howland descendant, as I understand you are. And, and, you know, you look back, that means we descend from at least four people who were on that ship, two who died the first winter and two who survived and then had a lot of descendants. So this, of course, is spread throughout the country. And for those who have not yet linked into the Mayflower, there's a good chance you are a Mayflower descendant, whether you know it or not. It took me 30 years to find that out. I had no idea. But uh, there's, what, 20 to 30 million direct descendants, I think, is what one estimate is. Yeah, that's right. It's a huge number. Most people don't know it. It's waiting to be discovered. And whether or not you happen to be a Mayflower descendant, there is a lot of inspiration in this story. And the Mayflower Compact is one of the great foundational documents of our democracy. So it's very important whether or not you happen to be descended, but this will give occasion for a lot of people to look into that and make connections, whether to the Mayflower or to the period or to another place that will be personally meaningful to them. Exactly. And we could point out, by the way, that the Society of Mayflower Descendants actually has the first five generations pretty much mapped out and documented. So all you have to do is plug back to about, uh, what would you say, 1700, Brenton? Yeah, it's the fifth generation, so I'd say mid-18th century, and if you happen to connect to one of those lines, then as you say, it's very fully documented. It just shoots right back. 
Yeah, and our Great Migration series by Robert Charles Anderson covers all the other people, because if you have one of those lines, you're going to have many, many other lines in the period, and those people have now been documented, and uh, he has gone through records to give the most detailed account of every person who came here to New England between 1620 and 1640. Now, we've had uh, Bob on the show, and he's talked about it. I mean, it's one of the most prolific uh, series ever out there, and it affects yeah. so many Americans th throughout the country and people around the world. Now, next year, you guys are planning a trip as a start of this 2020 celebration. So in 2018, we're talking about people going back over to see where their ancestors came from who were on the Mayflower. Talk about that a little, Brenton. Sure. Well, the first event, even before that, actually occurs here in June when we're going to be auctioning off low number license plates for Plymouth 400. And so I just bring that to everyone's attention sure. because that'll be a very special event. But we are planning three tours overseas and then a tour here in this country associated with the Mayflower story. And in 2018, we'll go to Scrooby Manor. We'll be staying in Nottingham in England, and Robert Charles Anderson will guide us in Scrooby Manor and environs, and will be following in the footsteps of William Brewster and William Bradford and our mutual ancestor John Howland and others, and learning what motivated these people to leave England. The following year, we'll go to Leiden in the Netherlands, and we'll visit the location where the congregation lived between 1608, when they formally asked for permission to live there in 1609, and then left in 1620. So there's a lot of pilgrim history in the Netherlands. And then in 2020, we'll go back to the United Kingdom and visit. We'll go to Harwich in the east, where Captain Jones was from and John Alden was from and where the Mayflower was probably built and probably launched through London and then down to Plymouth and visit sites associated with the embarkation of the Mayflower. So these are really going to be wow. amazing trips led by the experts. So it will be the world's authorities on these topics with us and we'll have it open not only to our members, but members of Plymouth Plantation and the Mayflower Society and really anyone else who would wishes to come. And, and these are going to be so popular. I know we plan already to be able to repeat some of them so that everyone, I hope, who wants to go can walk in the steps of their ancestors. Okay, we're going to just stop for a moment. Would you put my name down for next year? I mean, already, this sounds <laughs> okay. really good, Brent. <laughs> well, now you've got me on the air saying yes, yes so I guess you're correct. in. Yes, that's correct. I'm in. Yes. All right. Well, you know, this is fun because I know a few years ago, Virginia had their 400th celebration, and they contributed so much as well. In fact, it seems to me there was some time back in the last couple of years where we had one of your people on who actually descends from both Jamestown and the Mayflower at Plymouth. And it's kind of a rare combination. That's right. Well, you know, and we're inspired by what Jamestown, how that anniversary was celebrated. The Queen came over. It was a big deal. It is a national story. And that's why one of the reasons we have our website as American ancestors, because we, we serve the whole country and have resources like the Virginia genealogist is on our website or the Pennsylvania genealogist or the American genealogist. So I, I do want to get a plug in for those who are doing research in in other parts of the country and the importance of their stories and Jamestown is high among them. So yes, it's something we want to emulate how that anniversary was celebrated and hope to give Plymouth as much fanfare and attention in 2020 as Jamestown rightly did a few years ago. Boy, isn't that great? And you know, the New England Historic Genealogical Society has been around now since what, 1840 something? Is that right, Brenton? Yes, 1845. We wow. are the founding genealogical organization in the Western world and uh, now serving more than 225,000 members with, what is it now, 1.4 billion records and a manuscript collection with almost 30 million items in it and growing every day. And so we consider our role as the nation's genealogical society to be very important. And we serve people all over the country and all over the world. And it's a great honor to follow in the footsteps of the people who made this happen and who had the inspiration in the 1840s to put together a genealogical society. Every genealogical society, the hundreds of societies that are out there now, 
spring from and root back to this organization. And we're proud of that history. Well, and you should be. You know, you were mentioning your membership. Isn't a majority now outside of the New England area? That's right. We are, we're spread out all over. We have a huge number of members in the South and the West Coast, California. We almost should have branch offices. We have so many constituents outside of the region. And that's one of the reasons we're always traveling and always having programs in other cities and other parts of the locations, because we want to connect with genealogists in their hometowns. And that's why you use the website AmericanAncestors.org, because you want to make sure that people understand it's just not a New England-centric organization any longer. That's right. We have a regional name for the institution, but we picked a national name for our website because it does indeed serve a national audience. And the funny thing about it is, is really since 1845, we were collecting for the whole country. All right. Real quick, because we're running out of time, Brenton, what else is coming up from New England Historic Genealogical Society that we can all get excited about? Well, uh, the main thing I wanted to announce were all the books and special events for 2020, but we're also expanding our headquarters. And I've just announced our Cornerstone project. We've bought the building next door, and in the next five years, we're going to be expanding into it, developing a discovery center, a learning center. We'll have an expanded retail operation, and we hope everyone will have the opportunity to visit us in Boston and come see our amazing headquarters. That's incredible. And where can people find out more about the trips? At AmericanAncestors.org. As tours are finalized, we will post them. We'll have announcements in our weekly e-newsletter and on our Facebook page. And uh, don't hesitate. The minute you see it, sign up. I'm embarrassed to say most of our tours go to waitlist uh, situations. So it is important when you hear of one to sign up as quickly as you can. You're already in. So. All right. There we go. I'm okay. counting on it. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Good. He's Brenton Simons. He's the president and CEO of the New England Historic Genealogical Society and AmericanAncestors.org. Hey, thanks for all the exciting news, Brenton, and great talking to you. Well, my pleasure, friend. Thanks so much for having me on. And coming up next in five minutes, how do you get those kids and grandkids to get excited about stories about people they've never even met? You'll find out on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Scientific studies have proven that youth who know even a little bit about their family history perform better academically and have a greater sense of personal confidence and stability. Genealogy is its own incredible superpower that arms our children with super strength. But how do you get your child or grandchild interested in studying their family history? That kind of stuff is just for grandmas, right? Not anymore. ZapTheGrandmaGap.com leaps the generation gap in a single bound. Author Janet Havorka provides you with useful and timely advice on helping the young people in your life become engaged in their own family history. Janet has an entire collection of books to inspire the young and the young at heart in fun, interactive ways. She also offers creative tips and advice on her blog and in her free weekly newsletter. Stop by ZapTheGrandmaGap.com today to sign up for Janet's free email newsletter with 52 weeks of easy tips, free downloads, and order your set of resource books and workbooks. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chart Masters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartMasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chart Masters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style of genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chart Masters option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chart Masters today at FamilyChartMasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chart Masters will give the greatest care to your family history. Tell me about the castles that you saw when you lived in Heidelberg and around the area. Well, they were very fun, and then at this 
castle, there was like this little trail, and we went there. It's really old, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Worn out. Trying to keep it clean, maybe build in things. That was my incredible granddaughter, Haley, with me in the studio this past week as uh, I attempted to get her excited about family history and particularly about recording some of her own. Hey, it's Fisher here, your Radio Root Sleuth on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. And the segment is brought to you by 23andMe.com DNA. Speaking of all this, about getting kids interested in family history, I've got my friend Deanna Bufo Novak on the line with me right now. She's with Kids Heritage. And uh, Deanna, Deanna and I met at Roots Tech a couple of years ago, and you ought to see what she does with books. Deanna, welcome to the show. Nice to have you. Hey, Scott. Thank you so much for having me. So you've been involved in this whole thing for a long time. You actually do a lot of these books that you create for Disney World, right? Disney World, right. Yeah, I've been doing it for 13 years, trying to get children excited about their heritage at a much younger age than what we've seen in the past. And it all started when my daughter was born, and I said, how do I teach her about her heritage when I realized she was uh, more than just Italian like I am? Yeah, that's right, because you, every <laughs> time you get another generation in there, there's more and more flags that uh, get stuck on the map. Absolutely. And I said, I don't want to go buy three books. I want to buy one book that can teach her about both sides of her heritage. So that's really how it all started. She was my inspiration. But yes, since then, we now do them in Disney World and a lot of other places and love getting involved with Roots Tech and all the great people there to really get that next generation involved in. And how do we do that? So let's talk about that a little bit. You've learned a lot over the last 13 years. The books that you create, obviously, are on a commercial level where you can put them together very quickly for people and and assemble them. What would an individual do if you were to give them some advice about getting kids to understand their legacy, their heritage, and uh, where they're from, their ethnicity? Well, first, understand really how important it is. Again, this started as a very personal project, if you will, of mine, just because I wanted my daughter to know and be proud of her heritage. But it really has a much broader implication. The the more that they understand about their own heritage and and about their own family and about those roots, it increases their self-esteem and their confidence. And it gives them that strong foundation upon which to stand. And I believe when you have that kind of confidence and self-assuredness, you're much more likely to understand that there is a broader perspective out there, that their friends have different heritages, that they all come from different places and are proud of it. So rather than making judgments, maybe asking questions and wanting to learn more, and I think that paves the way to a much more open society and things that we really need today. So I think it's more important than ever right now. And there are so many ways to do it from cooking a traditional recipe with the child to looking at old photos and talking about the country itself and topics that they can relate to, making scrapbooks, tons and tons of activities that you can do with your child or grandchild. Obviously, it would depend on the age level, but there's lots that can be done to get them excited and started at a younger age. Boy, you're absolutely right about that. I was sitting with my four-year-old Haley the other day at the computer and showing her, first of all, that we're on a ball. (laughs) We're we're, we're on this great big ball in outer space, and here's what it looks like from a satellite. And she was living in Germany up till recently, and I was showing her where on the map Germany right. was, and then the flight path when she came back to the United States yeah. recently, and, and oh, the country great. she went over, and, and some yeah. of the places then some of her people are from. She came into our home and immediately recognized a picture of my great-grandfather, a New York fireman from oh, back in the, the 1800s, and said, oh, it's Grandpa Andrew the fireman! And <laughs> that just, of course, lights me up right away, that she yep. is getting a sense of deeper roots more than just parents and grandparents, that type of thing, going even further back. And it does make a big difference. I love it. I love it. My son now calls my great-grandmother, so his great-great-grandmother, Rose. So he tells me he wants to invent a time machine, which is a whole other story. But he says that when he gets this time machine, he is going back to, number one, see Frank Sinatra, because he loves Frank Sinatra, (laughs) and number two, go visit with Rose, who is his great-great-grandmother. That's exactly how he'll refer to her. It's just a part of everyday conversation. It's not like some big mystery. That's right. um, Because I've taken the steps from when they were very, very young, to talk about them and to make it a part of the family and to show them these pictures and ask them questions. But it is important to look at it from their perspective. Like you said, you're showing her a globe and saying, okay, this is where we are and this is where you just were and and this is that country. You know, another interesting thing he had said to me, my son was, when did the world get color? I just 
wrote a blog on this because <laughs> it was so interesting to me that, you know, all these pictures I'm showing him are black and white and a lot of the other things he's seen are black and white. So to him, sure, the world was black and white. When did we get color? It, so That's funny you said that because I just posted a video recently that somebody put together showing modern places in uh, New York City and what they right. looked like back in the 19th century. Same place and uh, it would morph from one to the other and somebody posted there, well, everything was black and white back then. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's interesting, you know, at first it was just really cute and then I thought about it I said, you know, we are telling our stories and from our perspective and our views and our photos and our this and our that. But, you know, if you take it a step back and look at it from the child's perspective, again, depending on their age level, really try to ask those questions and and listen to what they're saying. So we are understanding it from their perspective and and seeing what they're getting out of the conversations, because that's really important. We want to make it fun for them. If it's not fun, they're just going to tune out and go do their thing. And you know, I think they're really getting so much out of it if it's approached in the right way. Well, and, and think about some things you can do. Show them how, for instance, you might be able to restore an old photograph. Mm-hmm. And all the time you spend focused on that person while you're correcting cracks or, or fixing tears or whatever it may be, and maybe actually yeah. going in then and colorizing that picture. Mm-hmm. And what a difference that can make in helping somebody say, hey, w- wait a minute, I, yeah, they're studying the face the entire time. And then getting right. that sense that they really were a person and not just a name or an old piece of paper. Exactly. And who loves electronics more than our children and Absolutely. grandchildren, right? It, they love that stuff. It's speaking their language. Absolutely. So being present, I think, is, is huge. And no matter what we do, whether we're, we're talking about family history and heritage or anything, is, is being Soccer, present yeah. with them. <laughs> you know, put the electronics away unless you're doing something like that where, you know, the activity involves, you know, using the computer together and work on some activities. And, and of course, incorporating the, the electronic part as well, because that is a part of their lives and it's part of our lives now. And there is so much there that we can use. How about Mm -hmm. Google Street Level? This is where I used to live, and this is what it looks like now. Yes. We we never had anything like this. No. (laughs) I mean, we have have more tools right now to reach out to a child at a very basic level to get them excited about the fact that, oh, wait a minute, Grandma and Grandpa weren't always old. (laughs) <laughs> you know, I was talking to Haley the other day about this as we were coming to the radio station to record it. And I said, you know, when I was growing up, there weren't any computers, Haley. And her comment was, well, how did you find out about things? <laughs> I said, yep. well, it was called books. Books oh. and libraries. <laughs> yep. yeah. But they don't know any different, you know, no. and it's, it's up to us to help them see that because what a change. You know, where it comes in with these activities and and the book and and the purpose of those things is to give them something they can grasp and identify with and get excited about as a step, as an introduction to get them to that level. She's Deanna Bufo Novak. She's with Kids Heritage. What's the website for your books, Deanna? It's myheritagebook.com. Nice and easy. All right. Very nice. Thanks for coming on. Enjoyed it. Thanks so much. Great talking to you. All right. And uh, here's a little more of my visit with Haley, my granddaughter, this past week. Was that fun? Yeah, it was kind of long. Long? Well, that's how we learn about each other, right, as we talk and visit. Yes. You're a broadcaster now, huh? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, we'll save this and share it with everybody, all right? Okay. All right. Thanks for visiting with me, Haley. Okay. I love you. Love you, too, Papa. You know, everybody needs a place of their own to plant their family tree, preferably one that no one else can mess with and only you can control. That perfect place is Roots Magic. Roots Magic has been a family history standard for years, and now Roots Magic 7 is on the market. It's an award-winning genealogical software program which makes researching, organizing, and sharing your family history easy. You can start from scratch or import data from other software or even family search. Roots Magic 
also automatically finds records relating to your ancestors from MyHeritage, FamilySearch, and soon Ancestry and Find My Past. You can use it to create beautiful charts, reports, and books. And have you ever thought about making your own family history website? Roots Magic can make that happen too. And of course, there are free videos, guides, and technical support to help you along. Isn't it about time you planted your family tree? Whether you're a beginning genie or experienced professional, Roots Magic is the perfect tool for you. Extreme Genes is sponsored in part by 23andMe.com, a personalized genetic service that helps you understand what your 23 pairs of chromosomes, your DNA, say about you. 23andMe.com gives you a snapshot view of your DNA with more than 60 detailed reports on your health, traits, and ancestry, plus tools to explore and compare your DNA with family and friends. 23andMe.com is the first and only genetic service available directly to you that includes reports that meet FDA standards. Here's how it works. Order your DNA kit from 23andMe.com. Provide your saliva sample from home and mail it back to a CLIA certified lab. Then you'll be notified when your reports are ready online. You'll also receive ongoing reports as new genetic discoveries are made and as 23andMe.com is able to clear new reports through the FDA. See why more than 1 million people are experiencing their genetics with 23andMe.com. Order your DNA kit today at 23andMe.com. Well, genies, my personal family history researcher who sends me new information day and night has sent me some incredible new records and newspaper stories lately. Hi, it's Fisher, and the name of that researcher, by the way, is MyHeritage.com. It's the hardest working service in genealogy, looking for records of your family 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yes, even while you're sleeping. How does it work? MyHeritage uses hundreds of algorithms to match your ancestors to over 5 billion records from around the world. and with 97% accuracy. That means no more wasting time figuring out whether or not a match really is a match. I hear from listeners all the time who are shocked with how much information is accurately found and then passed along. And now MyHeritage will translate your ancestors' names into English or any other language you like from foreign records. In fact, it works with over 40 languages. No one else does this. Whether you're a beginner or seasoned researcher, you need MyHeritage.com. And welcome back to Extreme Genes, America's family history show, and ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here, your radio root sleuth. It is preservation time with Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com. He's our preservation authority. And this segment is brought to you by RootsMagic.com. Hi, Tom. How are you? Super duper. So we're talking phones today, or maybe the anti-phones. Is, yeah, yeah. is that where we're going? The anti-phone, exactly. Yeah, we've had a lot of people talk to us and say, hey, I love my iPhone. It takes great pictures. However, when I'm really doing some family history things, I want something a little bit better where I can adjust the depth of field, do it in darker situations, do where I've got more control over the camera. And so they say, what kind of camera do I get? Well, I love Canon. I love Nikon. Sony makes some great cameras. What you need to do is see what your end product is going to be and work backwards. So if you're shooting large groups, you might want to get a wide-angle lens. If you're shooting things far away that you actually can't get to, like maybe an old homestead that you used to live at that you can't really get on the property anymore, then you want a telephoto lens. Or if you're going to do both, you can buy zoom lenses that do both. They go wide all the way to telephoto. But you're saying you can't do that with a phone? (laughs) If you get a beast grip, which we talked about a few weeks ago that's also on our Twitter page, and get something like that, that adds some options because you put lenses on it. But But if you want a purist... But it won't get... Exactly to where we're talking about here. Exactly. I mean, you're talking about somebody who wants to be really artistic. They want very high quality, very large photographs, right, with uh, a lot of DPI. Exactly. Stuff that they might want to go in to edit or they just say, I don't want to deal with editing. I just want to get a good picture. And the thing is, you can go to places. One of my favorite websites, which we talk about all the time, is videomaker.com. They have a magazine you can subscribe to or just subscribe to their free newsletter. And every week they've got something really cool to talk about that's really awesome. They have good reviews. If there's a camera you're looking at, you can go in there and type it in. And 9 out of 10 times you'll actually find a review on that camera. And then if you want to talk to somebody, actually physically talk to somebody, and you're out in the middle of Dotham, Alabama, and don't have a place you can go to, you can call bhphoto.com. Call them any day except Saturday. They're closed on Saturdays. And talk to one of their technicians, and they really know their stuff. They've been around for a long time. They're in New York. 
I buy my really high-end gear from them, and I've never been disappointed. So that way you can call and say, hey, I'm looking at this and looking at this. What do you suggest? Or call them and say, hey, this is what I want to do. What do you suggest? And they give you a lot of options. But one thing you want to be really careful with is a lot of times the camera packages, advertising will say things on there, which you don't need. Like it says, digital zoom. A right. digital zoom is absolute garbage. Exit out. Don't pay any attention to it. Because all that's doing is that's taking your picture and zooming in on the picture you just took, not on the product. So all it's doing is like you can go onto your phone and like swish it with your sure. fingers and make it bigger. <laughs> yeah, it's not right. doing anything. In fact, it actually <laughs> gives you degraded copy. Sure. Well, you know, I think this is something that most people aren't going to really be going into. But I would assume that if you're one of those folks who's really into photography, even more than family history, that would be an option, right? Right. And the thing is, now that camera prices have come down so much, you can get a good, decent camera that aren't that expensive. And, you know, I suggest if you're doing something that's really important, get a little bit better camera. You don't have to spend a lot of money. There's nothing worse than having a group of people stand, and when you get the picture back, you can see stop sign coming out of Grandma's head. Right. <laughs> so with a better camera, you can go and adjust what's called your depth of field. So your group you're taking pictures of are all in focus, but everything behind them is not in focus. And some people say, well, I understand that. I've got the shallow depth of field. But what do I do? What you always want to do is whoever's on the back row, go in really tight as you can on their eye and focus on that and then back out because then everything from them forward will be in focus and everything behind them will generally be out of focus depending on what your f-stops are. So what I'd really suggest that you do is, like I said, make a list of what you're going to be taking pictures of. Once you get that list together, then it's going to tell you what kind of a camera is best for you, you know, whether it's a one-shot thing. But anytime you get into SLR lenses, which are single lens reflex, you can adjust them, do whatever you want. All right, Tom, what are we going to talk about in the next segment? We're going to talk a little bit more about cameras and a little bit about some new conventions coming up. All right, in three minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chartmasters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartmasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chartmasters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style of genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chart Master's option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chart Masters today at FamilyChartMasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chart Masters will give the greatest care to your family history. When was the last time you heard your grandmother's voice or saw your family enjoying life back in the 1950s or 60s? If the reason is you haven't known what to do with your old recordings, videos, and films, here's your answer. The Multimedia Center in Salt Lake City. We brought in a video project to the Multimedia Center, and overnight, they duplicated it to DVD so we could meet our deadline. The Multimedia Center, 2870 East, 3300 South, Salt Lake City. Open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6. Call 801-483-1717 or go to Transfer Duplication. Com. Extreme Genes is sponsored in part by 23andMe.com, a personalized genetic service that helps you understand what your 23 pairs of chromosomes, your DNA, say about you. 23andMe.com gives you a snapshot view of your DNA with more than 60 detailed reports on your health, traits, and ancestry, plus tools to explore and compare your DNA with family and friends. 23andMe.com is the first and only genetic service available directly to you that includes reports that meet FDA standards. Here's how it works. Order your DNA kit from 23andMe.com. Provide your saliva sample from home and mail it back to a CLIA certified lab. Then you'll be notified when your reports are ready online. You'll also receive ongoing reports as new genetic discoveries are made and as 23andMe.com is able to clear new reports through the FDA. See why more than 1 million people are experiencing their genetics with 23andMe.com. Order your DNA kit today at 23andMe.com. 
genie.com. Genies, it's Fisher with exciting news. The Weekly Genie, the official newsletter of Extreme Genes, is here. It's your Monday morning briefing on what's happening in the world of genealogy and family history and on Extreme Genes. Get all the details of jaw-dropping stories of discovery and keep up with the latest techniques in family history research. Get to know more about your favorite Extreme Genes personalities. And it's free. Sign up for The Weekly Genie now at ExtremeGenes.com or the Extreme Genes Facebook page. And when you do, you'll receive David Allen Lambert's top 10 tips for beginning genealogists from the chief genealogist of the New England Historic Genealogical Society. Sign up today for The Weekly Genie. And we are back. It's our final segment of Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show and ExtremeGenes.com. Fisher here, your radio root sleuth, talking preservation with Tom Perry from TMCPlace.com. Talking about moving up a little in your skills in uh, dealing with uh, cameras and, and instead of relying on the iPhone or your Android, you're talking about upgrading your cameras and some other interesting tools. The thing is, nowadays, it's not this big learning curve or this stupid manual you have to read. You know, between going to Video Maker and watching their free videos, going to YouTube, there's just so much content out there that can help you pass it real easy. You sit and watch a video, and you're almost a pro in a half-hour video. Absolutely. And then there's the editing, too, that can come with this. In fact, that's another thing that people ask me about. Should I use Adobe or should I use Apple? Well, Adobe Premiere is an awesome program, and if you buy the cloud, they just came out with a new cloud, which is called Cloud 2017. I guess they didn't like 2016 because they skipped it. (laughs) They went from 2015 to 2017. And the cloud is great because it gives you Photoshop for editing your stills, and you also have Adobe Premiere for editing your video, plus some other really cool, fun things. You mean that's all part of the storage process? Oh, yeah. If you buy the cloud, you have access to all the Adobe programs, so whatever you want to use. Some of them you never use, but when you buy the package and pay like a monthly price, it really doesn't matter because it's cheaper than buying two programs. So if you're just using Photoshop and you're just using Adobe Premiere, you've saved money and you've got access to all the other Adobe things. And some people like Final Cuts Pro, and people say, well, which one should I use? Well, if you're familiar with one, stay with it. If you're not, go and try them both out. Go and watch the YouTube videos and say, oh, this is more my style. Or, oh, this one's more my style. And then buy that one because they're equal. Well, you know, you're saying what I've always thought. And that is stay in your comfort zone if you're working on something you're familiar with. But if you're not familiar with anything or you want to really upgrade, then you have to step out of your comfort zone and try something new. And that's one thing I love about Apple. We have a lot of people that come into our store and write us or tweet us. They say, hey, I really like this program. I like this. And I love my Mac. It's kind of fun, but I'm just so much more comfortable with my PC. Well, then get Adobe. Knock yourself out. That's great. If you're the place where, hey, I use them both. I'm a quick learner. It doesn't matter. Then I always suggest to go with Apple because Macs are more created to do that kind of stuff. Sure. And so it's going to help you a lot. And, you know, if you're wanting to learn more, go to YouTube, go to these different places. There's always seminars. In fact, there's one coming up in Austin, Texas on May 22nd through the 25th. There's one in the Ozarks on May 17th. And Lamar, Texas is later in the month, too. And just go to my Twitter page, at AskTomP, and I'll always put links on there so you can go and check out what's in your neighborhood. And if you know of something that's not up there, let me know, and I'll post that as well. So one thing you want to remember, whether you're buying cameras, whether you're buying iPhones... Make sure you understand what you're buying. If a salesman is telling you things that you don't understand, write them down, go back to your computer, do some research, and don't ever buy anything on impulse. Always wait at least 24 hours, study it out. If you have questions, ask us at any time. You know, call B&H Photo, look at Video Maker's website. And you'll find the answers to most of your questions. Boy, you described me right there. I like it. I want it now. (laughs) And my wife's like, no, we're going to go home. We're going to study it. We're going to find the best price. We're going to find out if this is what we really need. She's so wise. It is great. There is nothing worse than buyer's remorse. Yeah, (laughs) absolutely. Tom Perry, he's our preservation authority. You can always email him at asktom at tmcplace.com, or you can follow him on Twitter at asktomp. Thanks for coming in, Tom. My pleasure. Well, it has been fun, and it's always way too short. (laughs) This segment has been brought to you by myheritage.com. Thanks to our guests, Brenton Simons, the president and CEO of the New England Historic Genealogical Society, talking about 
their Project 2020. If you have pilgrim ancestry, you're going to want to be a part of it because it involves travel to England and Holland over the next few years and all kinds of fun celebrations of the 400th anniversary of the arrival of the pilgrims. Thanks also to Deanna Bufo Novak for coming on and sharing some of her insight into getting your kids and grandkids excited about their family history and their heritage. If you missed any of it, catch the podcast, iTunes, iHeartRadio, ExtremeGenes.com, TuneIn Radio. Talk to you next week. And remember, as far as everyone knows, we're a nice, normal family.